Hey there, CPO here, and today we're gonna to talk about handheld radios of the FRS and GMRS variety. All right, so we're gonna look at three different handheld options from Midland in the FRS and GMRS range. So starting uh, from left to right here, we're gonna talk about the T20 series. We're going to talk about the T290 series. And then this is the T70 series here. So um, the T70, and the T20, these are both FRS systems only. Um, and uh, this is a GMRS and FRS capable radio in the middle with the T290. So all of these are capable of communicating with the in-vehicle GMRS system uh, that I showed you a few weeks ago from Midland. Um, so uh, that's why I wanted to talk about these in particular is because um, I got a lot of questions about whether or not uh, you could talk to different radios, what types of radios you could talk to. So I thought I would uh, just do this. So we're going to start um, with the, um, I guess the T70 series over here and just show you this radio and sort of uh, what it comes with and, uh, and what its features are. And, and then I'll talk about a little bit about how they differ from uh, the others. But this one, the T70 uh, does come, the this, this setup I have here uh, comes with a charger and uh, it comes with a USB charging cable and a little wall wart there. Uh, one of the things I like about this particular radio, now uh, keeping in mind, this is an FRS radio. Um, and so, uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to qualify this. You know what, let me start with the difference between FRS and GMRS. So FRS uh, is family radio service. It does not require an FCC license to operate. So um, this one and then, uh, and then these guys here uh, are license free use. And so these are great for uh, if you need just like a mile or two range uh, tops. That's line of sight range, by the way. I don't think you're gonna get much better than that. Um, but if you're out on the trail and you just need to talk to a spotter, um, these are great little radios. Throw a couple of these in the glove box and just hand them out and you guys can all communicate. So um, that's pretty cool. But uh, so FRS has a limited range um, and it, because of that, it's also got limited power settings, which is why the range is limited. So FRS has a designated list of channels uh, that can be used. GMRS has also a designated list, but also has higher range capabilities, but you can still talk on the FRS channel. So all of these can all communicate to one another on the same channel, including can, can, can talk to my uh, in-vehicle uh, radio. Uh, so let me get back to this guy here. So uh, T70, uh, again, uh, has the uh, charging stand. What I do like about this uh, is the fact that it also has a uh, USB charging port on the side. So you don't have to use the charging stand. Uh, if you're uh, out somewhere and you need to recharge batteries, uh, you can just plug into a cigarette lighter adapter like you would a cell phone and charge uh, via your charging cable. So I like that. Uh, and um, the other thing I think is pretty cool. So these come with rechargeable batteries. Uh, you remove the clip, then you remove the back and it's got a rechargeable battery pack. If you get into a bind, you can just put in three AA batteries. So uh, I like these that can interchange with uh, standard batteries. Just remember, if you do swap this out with regular batteries, don't go stick it in your charging uh, dock or try and charge it with the USB port. All right, so I'm gonna turn this guy on here. So one thing that I thought was interesting with these um, radios is Midland claims to have 36 channels. Now, I was like, how, how does that work exactly? Because there's technically 22 assigned uh, frequencies for the uh, FRS GMRS range. And as you see here, we can go um, through those. And I'll talk a little bit about the high power uh, versus low power here in a second. Um, but you get past there and you're in 23, 24. I'm like, what 
are those exactly. So then I checked the um, manual and I'm looking at the frequency ranges here and I see channels up to 22 and then 23 through 36 have no frequency designation. So then I was like, okay, well, what's going on here? So I figured it out. Um, basically what we have is Midland um, has given you uh, an easy way, a shortcut way of having some uh, private channels. And so, so all of the, let me go back here to um, one. All of these standard channels have the ability to have uh, privacy uh, settings. So there's a couple different options. So there are two different types of uh, enabling privacy. That's also gonna be the differences between some of these radios. This can handle both types. Think of it as analog privacy and digital privacy. This can do both. This one can only do analog privacy and this one can do both. Um, so uh, that means this one is capable of communicating with all privacy modes on this one. This one may not be able to talk to some certain privacy channels from these guys. So that's important to note. And that's how people can have uh, uh, some privacy on a small number of shared channels. So what Midland has done is, in addition to giving you the standard uh, 22 channels, if we scroll through here, we start getting into these additional channels. What these additional channels are, are really just other channels somewhere in the one to 22 range that have a code already set for them. So it's just a quick way to get a private channel without having to go into the menu options and set all these different functions. Uh, so for example, uh, this is set to uh, channel 27. I'm just gonna come over here to this radio and I'm going to scan channels, right? And let's see um, which channel it picks up on whenever I cue the mic here. All right, so channel 15 is um, what is being picked up there. So uh, it's basically channel 15 with some sort of a privacy code set on it. That's how that works. So uh, it's sort of a, a, a easy way to go in and uh, find some privacy uh, without having to, uh, to know what you're doing. So let's do uh, 30 here. Let's see. Key in the mic. And channel 30 is really channel 21 with some added privacy settings. So I actually think that's kind of nice because um, if you're with a group of people, you can put both of these radios um, on channel 30. Uh, let's see here. And then know that essentially, uh, it doesn't matter to you what frequency you're really on, but that you've got privacy between these two radios, they can talk to each other. Um, they are programmed to be able to uh, hear um, each other's traffic. These can be made to communicate with one another. Um, in certain cases, uh, you'll just have to figure out the privacy settings. But that's what's kind of cool about, uh, again, how Midland has done these extended channels. They're not really different frequencies. They're just leveraging existing frequencies uh, and then making it a little bit easier to get to those privacy modes uh, instead of going in like here and setting channel one uh, and then uh, DCS eight. As a matter of fact, I should probably fix that, and clear that out so I don't uh, wonder what's going on later. Uh, so anyway, uh, these radios, I'm getting some interference on channel one. Um, these radios do have um, a, uh, a weather alert, uh, which is nice, and weather uh, monitoring. So if I hold this down, um, I can go right to weather yes, alert. Low temperature was 31. And uh, that's nice. It's in a scanning mode, um, so it'll help you find automatically in this particular radio uh, the local uh, weather alert channel. And you can just hit call or um, or the push to talk button over here uh, to go back to your standard. Um, you can also uh, set the weather alerting 
As a matter of fact, let me do that. I'm gonna hold this to go into the weather alert mode. I'm gonna hit menu, and then the alert is set to off. I'm just gonna change that to on. And then go back, and now, now you can see, even in my regular channel, um, I've got that flashing uh, weather alert icon up there by the high power uh, designator. So that's gonna basically be background scanning and listening for alerts from the National Weather Service. And if one comes through, it will alert this radio. This is great if you're out and about, uh, not even off-roading, just if you're out and about in general outdoorsy, uh, it's nice to know if there's a storm coming through that um, has, has caused an alert. So. Uh, I tend to leave those features on. They do drain the battery, I think, a little bit faster, but uh, it's, it's been insignificant. Um, so this comes, uh, like I said, as is with the charging base. You can use regular batteries or the rechargeable batteries. You can charge it with USB on the side or not. Um, it has uh, no license requirement. It does have the uh, NOAA um, weather uh, service uh, capability with alerting. Uh, it has the ability to talk on uh, both types, analog and digital uh, privacy settings. And yeah, I mean, this is probably the most uh, feature-rich FRS uh, radio. Um, and, and uh, you know, this is a great sort of um, just plug and play, grab and go sort of a thing. Um, but doesn't have the capability like this does to talk to some other systems. Uh, this can talk to this uh, in all cases. Um, this one uh, has, is gonna have limited options for that because of that additional uh, digital uh, privacy stuff. So, all right, so that's this one, no license required. Um, I'll put some links in the description uh, so you can check out pricing and stuff. Obviously pricing is gonna vary on these um, and uh, I wanna make sure you get the, the most current information rather than giving it here if the price changes next week. I mean, my video is gonna be out of date. So um, that is that, the T70. So this, um, is the uh, T290 series. These are GMRS radios, uh, which means that they're going to have um, a license requirement. And the reason is they're able to communicate in uh, higher power ranges on those channels that are designated as a GMRS. It essentially has a lot of the same features and functions as the T70. Um, but again, with the um, additional ability to actually be a GMRS radio, uh, they both have 36 channels. Um, they both have the same number of privacy codes. It's the 38 uh, CTCSS and the 83 DCS. They both have Vox uh, voice operation, which is kind of cool. I'll show you that. They both have different call alerts. They can be gotten with vibrating alerts. So these don't actually have them. Neither one of these I have have vibration alerts. Um, they all have the weather scan stuff and scan functions and monitoring and the ability to, to basically change um, all of your different settings. Um, this one's gonna have like a high, medium, low power adjustment for the GMRS, whereas um, on the FRS, you really only have high and low, and high and low is relative to FRS versus GMRS. Um, high is different on this uh, than that. Um, and then, um, oh, so Vox. I was gonna show you Vox operation. So I'm coming in here in the menu, and uh, I'm going to set, uh, let's see here, Vox. Uh, so Vox 1, through nine settings. Um, it's, it's a little bit backwards to me because Vox 1 is the most sensitive and Vox 9 is the least sensitive. Uh, I would think it would be the other way around that the higher the number, the higher the sensitivity, but uh, it is what it is. So I'm gonna set this on Vox 1. Uh, I'm gonna change the channel to uh, five uh, because the, the Vox capability, the voice activated, uh, feature isn't tied to the channel. So you can see up, up in the top corner, it says Vox channel five. I'm gonna turn this radio on here, set it to channel five. And of course, because it's um, able to communicate on the same frequency, even though it's an FRS radio, it should be able to hear traffic um, from this. So the way Vox works is it, it listens for audio and then automatically keys the mic 
um, whenever it hears it. And it's actually doing that now while I'm talking. You can see the TX right there. Hey there, I just wanted to say something. So it, it actually engages the transmitter automatically uh, whenever it detects uh, a certain level of audio. Now I'm a little bit far away from this cam uh, from the, um, the microphone, so. Um, but what you'll see back here is, this one is actually receiving that signal. This one's transmitting, this one's receiving, uh, and uh, yeah, that, that's how it works. So if you are uh, off-roading, let's say, and you have a spotter, you can set your radio on voice activated and then communicate with the spotter without having to um, to touch anything or you know grab the mic and press a button or anything like that. So the downside of that is as you can see as I'm talking it's constantly uh, wanting to transmit there get that reflection a little bit better right there. It's constantly trying to transmit to this other radio and these are simplex uh, radio devices. So if you're transmitting, this guy can't talk to you back here. He can only hear. So if you're a loud talker or a constant talker when you're off-roading, setting it to Vox will probably just uh, infuriate everyone, including your spotter. Um, but if you're in a certain situation where you have sort of an obstacle you'll need to try and navigate, might not be a bad idea to play with that. Uh, I honestly haven't tried it, so... Um, uh, I don't, uh, I, can't, I can't validate uh, how well it works, but you see the point. As long as I'm talking, it's recognizing and then it's transmitting to the other radio. So the other interesting thing is it takes a second before it recognizes that it hears sound and then starts transmitting. So your first few words are always cut off. Uh, so if you start the conversation with like, hey, you know, I'm about to talk and then you start talking, uh, it'll probably not even share the, hey, I'm about to talk part because it's just getting ramped up. So uh, just a thought there, just know you're gonna have a delay before it actually starts transmitting. And then to turn that off, I'm just gonna go back into the menu. Uh, and instead of changing channels, I'm going into the Vox setting, put that back down to off. And I'll show you some of the other. So Roger beep is that beep that, that you keep hearing that goes off uh, every time the transmission's done. Um, that beep there is the Roger beep. You can turn that on or off. Um, let's see here. This is um, the uh, privacy, again, uh, CTCSS and uh, DCS or off. Um, this is the power level, so low, medium, and high. Uh, you don't have that option on all channels. Some of the uh, FRS uh, channels are limited to only low power. You can't change them. Uh, but the ones that you can change, you can set to low, medium, high. I just suggest setting them all to high, to be honest with you. Um, Vox again, Roger Beep again. So call, you can have five different call options. So, um, that's annoying. All these are annoying to me, actually. Uh, like that one there. So how that works now is um, when uh, because we're on the same channel, right? Uh, these two radios are on channel five. Uh, if I hit this call button, it's calling this radio, and uh, it's a good way to say, "Hey, I'm I'm looking to communicate with you." And then uh, and then you can start the conversation. It's basically just an attention getter. Um, I, Never really use it, to be honest with you. I just use my voice to get attention when I need to talk to somebody. Um, beep is just uh, to silence all the beeps on the thing, so now it's completely quiet, whereas before uh, it beeped every time I pushed a button. So um, that's how that goes. Uh, you've got your battery power uh, right up here, and of course you've got an orange backlight. Uh, you can lock all of the buttons, so press and hold. And uh, now it's locked, you see a lock indicator. So none of these things work um, except the call button and the, uh, the push to talk button over here where we actually like have a conversation with somebody. Uh, and then just press and hold it to unlock. And I'm kind of doing these back to back because these two radios are very similar. Like uh, you'll notice almost all of the same features exist in the FRS version as they do here in the, uh, the GMRS version. Uh, yeah, so monitoring, you can hold this down and just listen to traffic. There's a volume control uh, up at the top. 
and uh, you know it's useful to see if you can hear some distant signals uh, yeah and then that's pretty much it the on off button is just this top uh, and it's the um, on off and volume. This one comes with the charging base as well. It does not have the ability to, uh, to charge via USB. Um, it comes with a, uh, a charger, but it's um, a standard like plug. It's not a USB uh, plug. And uh, there's no USB port on the radios. So not as easy to, um, to field charge. And uh, one other cool feature is both of these radios have the ability to work with these uh, remote um, wired uh, microphone and earpieces uh, for hands-free-ish operation. Uh, they do have a push to talk button here on the side and um, they're gonna plug in right here on the side of the radio, right there. Um, both radios have that capability but this one, the 270, um, actually comes with uh, the mics. So um, that's uh, a nice bonus there uh, for that. Or the, sorry, the, the 290, I said 270. It's a 290, T290 and T70. So I probably said that wrong about a million times. I apologize. Um, a lot of numbers to remember. Uh, so now, Let's talk about these guys. Um, they can't communicate on the digitally uh, uh, established privacy modes, the DCS, but they do uh, communicate on the CTCSS modes. So um, in, in most circumstances, you're gonna be able to, well, you're always gonna be able to set up communications between all of these guys and then the guys back here in the back and even the, uh, the in-vehicle systems. Uh, you just have to be, be choosy on which privacy setting you do. Um, it can talk on all of the same 22 channels and uh, even has weather scanning. Uh, no on-off uh, knob. Uh, the, the power is set uh, by holding the power button down. And then um, you've got your volume controls right here. And uh, if you hold these together, It'll take you into the weather um, monitoring and uh, hit menu to change channels. And our, my weather alert is uh, is two. I can hit menu again, and that's where I can turn the weather alerting alarm on or off. So I told you I generally leave mine on. And then if you hit the push to talk, it'll go back to the standard uh, settings. And then so um, if you just hit these up or down, it's the volume. If you hit menu, then you can change the channels. And again, all 22 channels, the same ones uh, that are back here on these guys. So if I turn this to channel 12, and this one's on channel 12. What do you think is gonna happen? Yep, so they communicate uh, just fine with one another. Uh, again, uh, privacy settings can be set. To be honest with you, I never really use privacy settings. So this is a great, like these are inexpensive enough and you can see they come in cool colors. And uh, this was a four pack uh, with different colors. Obviously I'm playing with the orange one because that's sort of my style. Um, but uh, they're great to like throw into um, a go bag or a glove box and then just be able to hand out, like if you're out, like I said, wheeling or, or hiking, you could just hand out a few radios. These do not uh, come, re they don't have rechargeable batteries. Uh, you have to put batteries in it. I think it was four uh, AAA batteries. Yep, uh, four AAA batteries for these guys. Um, but you can't get much simpler than this. Um, but yet capable. So I hope that helps. I did, uh, like I said, have a lot of questions about, you know, um, what these radios can, uh, can talk to or not talk to. Uh, what I will say is that um, I, I think it's worth getting a uh, GMRS license. It's only, I think it's 70 bucks uh, right now. It's a 10 year license and it's a family license. So um, I went out and got one. There's no test 
it's literally just them taking your money from you as the government is so good at. Um, but uh, it's good for 10 years and uh, your entire family can use it. So when we go out, um, I'm not likely to use these as much as I am to use something like this uh, more fully featured because my entire family is eligible legally to, to use these. Um, but uh, if you don't want to go through that or you, you're out with people who haven't done that, um, having these uh, FRS options is certainly a nice way to go. So uh, that's all I'm going to say about this. Go ahead and hit me up in the comments if you have any questions or, uh, or other uh, comments, feedback, uh, help. If I missed anything uh, that you thought was important to talk about, let me know. Um, and then uh, as people come back and view this video, we'll just keep updating the comments with anything uh, that might be useful. Uh, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.